Hey, what's going on, guys? Tanmay for Simple Snippets, and today's video tutorial is going to be on switch case conditional statement. So, in the previous video tutorial, we saw the if else structure or if else conditional statement. So, if you have missed that video, you can check it out. And today's topic is all going to be about the practical aspect of the switch case conditional statement, which is another type of a conditional control statement. So, today we are going to be seeing one program. So, as you can see, I have written the question over here. So, we have to write a program to find day of week. From its corresponding number. Now, this question essentially means that I will be creating an integer variable, let's say in day, and I will assign numbers one to seven, and depending upon the number, I have to print what day of week it is. So, one will be Monday, two two will be Tuesday, three will be Wednesday, and so on. Okay, so we have seven different cases over here. So we are going to be using the switch case control structure. Or control statement, and I'll tell you when to use switch case versus when not to use switch case, and what are the advantages and disadvantages of switch case over if else control statement. So with that being said, let's start off with the program. So quickly create a program in your NetBeans IDE. Go to File New Project. You can see I have already created it, and I would highly recommend you that you type along with me so that you get the best practice of programming. So starting off in the public static void main, which is the entry point of any Java execution program. Or any Java program in its execution, so the main function gets executed first. So inside that, we'll start off with creating a variable. I'll say int day. Initially, I'm just going to give it a value of zero. Now note note that I'm still not taking input from user, just to keep it simple. So I'm hard coding the value, and by hard hard coding, I mean I'm assigning the value in the program itself. I'm not taking it from the user. So now we will start off with the switch case statement. So here's how the Syntax goes. You have to type in switch as w i t c h. So you can see it got highlighted. It's a keyword in Java. In the opening and closing round brackets, you have to pass the integer variable that is day. So we are going to iterate this in the switch case, and then we have to open and close curly braces. So this is the body of the switch case. So whatever cases we are going to check are going to be inside these opening and closing curly braces. So now we have one to seven, right? So we are going to be checking. From one to seven, which means we have seven different use cases. So let's start off with the first one, and here's the syntax. We have to type in case. So again, case is a keyword. You can see it got highlighted, and you have to say colon. So this is not a semicolon. This is a colon. Semicolon is used over here just to end a statement, but this is a colon which is two dots. And then you have to type in. You have to give a space after case, and you have to type in the actual number which we are checking for. So the first case is when day equals to one. So we have to check for one. So this one that I've given is the actual integer value of day that we are going to be checking for. So I'll tell you what that means in a minute. So when day is equal to one, what is the message that we are going to print? So I'll say system dot out dot print ln. It is Monday, right? And you can take this on a new line also. So if I hit enter, you can see it is automatically indented properly. So this was for Monday. Next is case number two. So I'll say case two and colon. Just copy this system dot out dot print ln. And I'll say Tuesday. So when the day integer variable will have number two, that is, it will hold a value of two. This case should be executed, and then it has to go on till seven because we have seven different days in a week. So we have seven use cases. I'm just going to paste them all. So you can see it is throwing an error over here. It is already telling me duplicate case labels. So I have to change the label. So I'll say three. This would be four. This would be five, and then we have two more. So this would be six and seven. Also, I have to also change the messages inside. So Monday, Tuesday, this would be Wednesday. This would be Thursday. This would be Friday. This would be Saturday, and this would be Sunday. Okay, so we have the seven different cases that we are interested in. But what if the integer value that is stored in this day variable, which is an integer type, is not between one and seven? It is something else. Let's say it is minus three, or it is hundred, or it is fifty-five. It can have any value, right? So in that case, since it does not fall in our required category, we have one more case which is pretty much mandatory or pretty much used most of the times in a switch case, and it is known as default case. So I'll say default. Colon, and then I'll again print out a message saying enter entered number is not between 
1 to 7. So when any of these cases does not match, that is when we do not enter a number which falls between 1 and 7, this default case will be executed. So this is the basic syntax of switch case and let's first try to run this. So I'll first assign day is equal to 1. Let's save this and let's try to run this and let's see what we get. We should be getting Monday, right? Let's see if this works. Okay, so there you go. We got Monday, but you can see we also got other days also and we also got the default value. So what exactly happened over here? Let's let's first change this day to number 4. So I think we should be getting Thursday, right? Let's save this and let's try to run this now. So there you go, we got Thursday and after Thursday, all of these again got printed, which means what exactly happens in a switch case is when we are executing the program, let's say day value is 4, it will go for case number 1, it will check 1, since 1 is not equal to 4, it will ignore this case, it will move on to the next case. Now it will check case number 2 and this 2 value is checked with 4 value that is stored in the day variable, since 2 is not equal to 4, case number 2 is again ignored, then it will move on to case number 3. So 3 also does not match and lastly when it hits case number 4 it sees that okay case 4 means this value 4 is matching with this value 4 which is stored inside the day variable right. So it will execute this and once it gets a match everything after case number 4 is executed. So that is the reason why in the output once we got Thursday that is case number 4 Friday, Saturday, Sunday and even the default case was executed. But that is not exactly what we want right we just want one case to be executed every time depending upon what number we give. So there is one more statement that needs to be added in every case which is known as break. So let me just first copy and paste this in every case and I'll explain to you what happens. So I'm just copy pasting it in every case at the end of every case. So this should be the last statement in every case. Even after default I'm just giving it because it's, out, it's actually not needed. I'll just erase it because default would be executed only when none of these would occur. Okay so this break statement will exit the switch case whenever a hit is found. So now let's see if this works. Now only Thursday will be printed and then after Thursday you can see there is a break statement, right? So when, when the program comes on a break statement, it will ignore case 5, 6, 7 and default. Let's try to run this. So there you go. You can see now we only got the output of Thursday which is shown over here. So this is what break helps us enable. It basically breaks the loop or you can say it basically breaks that flow and comes out of switch case. So that is where break statement helps us in breaking the flow and coming out of the block. Basically this entire switch case is one block and whenever a break statement comes, it comes out of this block and it comes over here which is the end of the program. Now talking about difference between switch case and if else statement, switch case has a particular limitation that it, it can only operate with character and integer type variables. So it can only take an integer variable since this is an integer variable it is allowed. However, if I make this a double variable, you can see that it is throwing an error. So you can see the message is incompatible types. So it does not allow us any other type of variable and we've already seen what is data types of variables in the previous video tutorials. So if I change this to char, then it is allowed because char and integer are compatible with each other. So int and char is the only data variable that we can use with switch case. However, in if else we can use any other data type also. So double is allowed, float is allowed, even user defined data types that we'll see in the further videos are all allowed. So now talking about another limitation is that in switch case you can see these cases are distinct and absolute values. So we cannot use a condition over here. So I cannot say case day minus 1 or I cannot say case day less than 3. So even this less than or greater than or relational operators are cannot be used in cases. It has to be a single integer value that is the value that we are checking for. But in if else, if you remember in the previous video tutorial, we could check the value of x less than 5 or I could check the value of if x is less than 0 then it is a negative number. If x is greater than 0 it is a positive number, right? We could use conditions and we could use those expressions in the conditions. But in switch case, we cannot use those expressions. We can only use solid numbers, absolute numbers that are integers or characters. So I can have one more switch case. Let's say I say char x or char letter is equal to I declare a character variable which will store one character. So this is storing A. So I can pass this over here. Switch letter and then I can check for individual alphabets. Case A, case B and note that small a is different from capital A because both of them have different ASCII values and it is considered different because Java is a, what we say case sensitive language. 
so yeah these are the two different drawbacks of switch case and you cannot use them when we are having any other data type other than integer or character and if we are going to have conditions which will have expressions like relational operators or some operators in the expressions so in that case we cannot use switch case otherwise we can easily use switch case and switch case is basically used when there are many individual parameters to be checked or many individual cases or conditions which are distinct from each other especially when they are integer and character so you can see we had seven distinct cases over here that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and so on so that's why we were using switch case we could have used if else also but then that becomes a little tedious and this becomes a little more easy to understand but it is only applicable to certain programs also i hope you understood why we use default so when none of these will match the default would be executed so it is not necessary to include it but if you don't include it you wouldn't have got this output if you enter any random number value so yeah this was about the switch case control statement in java programming i hope you understood the switch case and the difference between switch case and the if else control statement and when to use what so if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel make sure you subscribe to this channel and i'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial peace